Keith Coker's work in Old Forge Brewing Company and in the studios of Mark Irwin in Danville. And now I'm really excited to get to introduce you to the artist himself. From a very young age, Keith Coker was interested in carpentry. When I was like in sixth grade, I liked making things. Mm -hmm. And I just decided that I wanted to be a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, wow. that's what I did. He studied carpentry at Votex School before heading out into the world. I was a carpenter and I did mostly remodeling and things like that. In my younger days, I did uh, work for a company that built houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, after, you know, I don't know, I think I worked there seven or eight years. and. I just got bored with building houses. So I got into remodeling and I liked remodeling. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you could do things with old houses and yeah. make cool. nice spaces. Woodworking was still just a hobby for Coker. In 1990, he began working on the building that is now his wood shop. He designed it from the ground up and built it as time and money allowed. You know, I would get jobs and then we would do the job and then as soon as the job was over with then I would put another window in or put a door in or, right. or whatever had to be, you know, just mm -hmm. progressively continue on mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's how it all came wow. about. By 1991, the building was under roof and ready for use. Today, it is the home of Light Street Custom Woodworking, where Coker builds furniture and cabinetry by commission. His wood shop is chock full of the tools of the trade and his handiwork can be seen everywhere. We've made all our own fixtures and carts and different yeah. things that metal racks that are in here. Having seen a sampling of Coker's work, I knew he was an exceptionally talented craftsman. As he showed me around his home, his artistic vision became evident. When he's given the opportunity, he lets his creative energy flow through his work. It was one of those jobs that was for a friend of mine and he wanted me to do it, but he didn't really have a plan and he said just Make it like you would. The, the, the concept of the vine here, mm -hmm. I did that in his cabinetry. So we ran this walnut uh, vine that, that just permeates out through the cabinetry. Wow. And then there's pieces of glass that have, uh, they're actually uh, hand-blown rondelles. It's like a circular piece of glass with a, that's made on the end of a punty rod. Mm -hmm. And then they're spun out as to a flat disc. Well, we made, uh, in this vine we had places where there was like places where I could insert pieces of glass and so it had an organic flare that was mixed into it. It really came out nice and, and it's very unusual. The house he shares with his wife Joan is filled with his art both inside and out. From floors to doors to end tables, Coker's artistry permeates the space. Mixing different kinds of wood is a hallmark of Coker's work. They complement each other and they highlight each other like this here. This here actually is white oak and this is quarter sawed. Mm -hmm. So this wood here is real stable and it doesn't expand and contract very much. Mm -hmm. So therefore for a door panel, it's ideal. Coker's property is graced by lots of metal sculptures that he's created. Great big dragon that I made maybe six, eight years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was one of the first things I made in the sense of sculptural playing around. Coker even made the fountain that sits next to his wife's garden. But that's made out of copper tubing and then the real wide parts where the where the pans of water are, mm -hmm. that was made out of large like sewer pipe oh, and wow. it was recycled tubing that I cut and shaped and put back together. A giant weather vane that pays homage to Keith's fascination with the possibility of extraterrestrial life sits near a 10-foot stainless steel spider in the field behind Coker's home. I wondered when he made the move from wood into metal. I always liked metalworking. When we were kids, we used to go down and play in the coal furnace. My dad had a coal furnace that he would heat the house with, and he would go to work, and we would take stuff and go down there and stick something in and then get it hot and pull it out and then maybe pound on it or bend it or mm -hmm. you know play around and manipulate it mm -hmm. and uh, sort of that's sort of where it started and then I just got fascinated with the idea mm -hmm. and uh, when I was in my early 20s I bought a forge and bought some tools and just got into it. Everything he knows about metalwork Coker learned on his own. I'm certainly no master but I like making stuff you know. Again Coker's home serves as a gallery for his art. In another building beside his house, Coker has a complete metal shop with all the associated tools of the trade. 
Some of them, including two South Bend lathes and a Camelback drill press, are antiques, but they get the job done. If you said, would you rather have an antique car or an antique lathe, I would take the antique lathe, because look what you can do with it. <laughs> that theme continued throughout our visit. What might seem as trash or scrap to the average person is a tool or a piece of art just waiting to be created. With Coker's guidance, I got to make something useful out of a piece of scrap metal. But this is, this is a forge, and what we have here in a forge is you have a, a hearth with brick, and then in the center here, there's a, a fire pit, and then in the bottom of the fire pit, you have a blower, mm -hmm. and the blower, as you can oh. see, blows air onto it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and that, that creates a draft, which then makes the coal burn, which then gets hotter and hotter and hotter. I'll hold the piece, I'll let you do the hammering. Here's a hammer. And uh, we're gonna lay it on here, and then you just hit the piece and you can watch it. See how it's getting smaller and smaller as we're, yeah. as we're going? Yep. And then what we'll do, once we get it drawled out to a certain amount, whatever you think would be appropriate, then we'll turn it back into an octagon. So we'll have it up on edge, and then we'll make it into an octagon, and then we can then make it back into a round. Oh my goodness. And uh, that's the proper way to, to take something and stretch it out. Oh really? You don't it, just, it if you, say it doesn't lose strength in that Well, if you, if you just hit it intermittently, at any which angle, mm -hmm. and you constantly just kept pounding on it and pounding on it and turning it, what would happen is it would start to fray and, and break apart, and it would actually lose its structural integrity. Oh, okay. And by manipulating it as a square first, it, it forms it and it's pushing out, and then you're pushing it out, and oh, you're pushing okay. it out, and you're maintaining it, it together. So okay. then it squishes out. And then you turn it back into a round. It doesn't lose its strength. And just like that, I had my own poker for my fireplace. Though metalworking is just a hobby for Coker, he has all kinds of different tools for different types of projects. Working with stainless steel to make the outdoor sculptures, I do TIG welding for that. Hmm. And uh, that's a special type of welding process. But it, it's just amazing what you can do with stainless steel. That's, that's my metal. That's my <laughs> metal of choice. It's so interesting, you can use it outside you can polish it, and when you polish it with a, with a poly, it reflects the light, reflects the sun. Uh, it, it just has a really remarkable quality, and it doesn't break down and rust, and you don't have to do any painting on it or anything. I think it's remarkable that one man's artistic vision can exhibit itself in so many forms, in a shop or a home, through furniture and sculpture, in wood and in metal. Keith Coker's art can be functional and beautiful, whimsical and imaginative. How fortunate the Susquehanna Valley is to have such a talented artist right here in your neighborhood. Coming up after the break, we're feeding alpacas.